on everybody. It's Coach John here with uh, Results Driven. Hey, I'm really excited uh, for our guest here today. So we have David Richter with us, who is the uh, author of Profit First for Real Estate Investors. Uh, really excited to have him on here. I know a ton of our students have such great success with this model, and uh, it just pours out tremendous value into the community. So uh, David, I'm really excited to have you uh, on here with us today. I know that everyone's going to take a lot out of this. So I, I'm going to kick it over to you and not waste any more time. Uh, I'm just really excited to have Sounds you Sounds good. Well, thanks for having me. I love Tiffany and Josh and the whole results driven team and uh, what you guys are doing are, I love what you guys are doing. And because a lot of people are in the space and they're not really doing the stuff behind the scenes. And you, if you know Tiffany and Josh, they are definitely kicking butt and the whole yeah. team there is kicking butt. So it's like, I love that they're teaching what they're doing and then they're so systems oriented. And that's why I love that they are having here us here because it's like, here you go. Here's a system for the finances. Like you're going to make the money. They're going to teach you how to get the money in the door. You might as well keep some of it as well too. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And then I'm going to share my screen. I've got a presentation here. I'm going to give the simple, simple profit first overview and making sure you have practical steps of that system and could go and implement it right away. So I'm going to go and share the screen now for this. Can you see it? Okay. Just want to make sure everything's good on your end and can Looks see good. the slide deck. Good. So it's profit first for real estate investors, how to keep more profit without doing more deals. So that's me, David Richter. I am the CEO of Simple CFO because we want to make sure that people actually have a system for the finances and how to keep the profit more of it without necessarily doing more deals. I do have to do a disclaimer because I'm talking about financial stuff. I'm not your CPA attorney, all that. It's on this recording now. So I am, I'm out of hot water. Just kidding here. I just want to make sure that you read this. This is the only boring slide of the presentation. Uh, and I have to have that in there because if you can believe it, my background is real estate investing, even though I totally look like the numbers guru. I get that a lot. So it's like, I understand that, but my background is actually real estate investing. We were doing 25 deals a month in the single family space at our highest point and spending 26 worth every single month. So it's like that the math doesn't math. So this is where it touched me personally, where I saw this and we were doing such a crazy amount of deals, but then nothing to show for it at the end of the day. That's what got me kicked down this road. So uh, this disclaimer is because I'm not your person. And also because my background is real estate investing, but I, this bug caught me and it's like, I want to make sure that you have the hope of getting out wherever you are now, or at least having the profitability. So here we go. I hate fix and flipping. I don't hate fix and flipping, but this is what Joey said when he came to me in 2019, because he went to his CPA at the end of 2019 and said, and said, okay, show me how I did this year. And she said, well, looking at your books, I would never get into real estate investing. And he felt like that was a slap across the face. Like, what the heck? You know, like, what is she talking about? But she said, yeah, not only would I not get into real estate investing, but you lost $70,000 this year. He's like, what in the world? He's like, how in the world did I do that? So, you know, he goes home dejected. And he said, David, because we were on a Zoom call just like this. And he said, David, it gets worse. I'm like, okay, how does it get worse? You know, like you lost a bunch of money. And you're like, this is, she's basically telling you to, to not do real estate anymore. And so he said, yeah, I went home and told my wife. But then from there, the last year, 2019, I started working 80, 90, 100 hour weeks. I started, <laughs> I started like not working out anymore. Like I stopped working out. I started just going like to all the appointments myself. Then from there, my wife, Ashley, who's right here, she started working in the business. She started having seizures because it was so stressful because we were just running around like chickens with our head cut off and like just tipped her over the edge stress wise. He's like, it was a bad year. Even though he said it was a bad year, but guess what? I did more deals than I've ever done, but I lost more money than I've ever lost. And I lost more time than I've ever lost. I'm like, oh my gosh, if that just does not encapsulate number one, Americans, <laughs> but number two, especially the real estate investing community, like where we're just go, 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 hustle, hustle, hustle all the time. That's honestly why I like Tiff and Josh a lot too, where they're, I feel like they're go, 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 but then they also are very family focused. They're very much with, about their daughter. Like they have the, the first things first. And it's like with this situation, Joey was just led astray. Like this was just the, the, the culture around him going to different meetings, different events, thinking he had to do more and that more was the answer, but more is not always the answer. So that's where, if you feel like Joey, 
right now and you're feeling like, oh my gosh, what is happening to my business? I want to help you get out of that. But if you've never felt like joy and you're starting on this road, I don't want you ever to feel like this because there's a simple system that can get you away from all of this. I have nothing to sell you on this webinar. Go figure this is a webinar, right? Like we should be selling. No, all I'm trying to get you is a practical steps for profit first. I want you to know by the end of this that you could keep more money over the next three months, next six months, the next deal. I want you to keep more money from it and not have this story be your story because the root problem is that most real estate investors and business owners know they make money but feel broke. I don't know if you've ever been there. Like we're doing these deals. I was there 25 deals a month. We were doing in that business as a team and feeling like we're doing so much, but we don't see it in the bank account. Where did it all go? What's going on? We were doing flips. We, we were doing wholesale deals. We were doing rentals. And it's like all the money was just gone all the time. And we weren't making any ground. We couldn't pay, pay, you know, pay people more. We couldn't do the things we wanted to do. It was just, it was a nightmare. But that's because most people just walk around like this in their business. But then so what the, another root problem here is that we don't know these three numbers. The root problem is that we don't know these three simple key numbers in our business. What do we make, spend, and keep? And I know. I mean, I just was on a podcast today where the guy said, thinking about the finances, I'd rather hit my head against the wall or like, be, you know, headbutt a nail into the wall. I'm like, that's how I used to think about it back before. I got this system in place. Like I just thought that the finances were there. That's great. But I just can go out and sell more deals. I don't need to know all this stuff. And he got to where he was burned out as well too. He, his story wasn't as bad as Joey's because uh, thankfully he, he saw the light a lot sooner. But that's where he thought that this was just going to be a big headache. And I'm telling you that there's a simple system that if you think that the operations and all of that and there's the system for marketing and acquisitions, there's the systems for everything. But do you have to have a simple system to catch the dollars? If you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off, we just need to know these three numbers. So I'm going to give you a very simple formula and a very simple system to know what am I making, spending, and keeping on a monthly basis. This I know you hear this a lot, probably in webinars and stuff. But it's not your fault. But I, honestly, on the financial side, it is really not your fault. <laughs> There's no one out there teaching this stuff. OK, there's no one going out there. OK, Dave Ramsey teaches this on the personal finance side, what I'm going to teach. And there's Susie Orman and there's other personal finance gurus who tells you where your money should go and like how you should manage it and how it should flow through. But no one's out there really teaching on the business side. OK, what do I do with all the dollars that come in? So make sure that I'm actually getting to where I want to be. We've been conditioned, but, you know, like this whole time not to be the business owner. Well, it starts even younger than that. It starts when we're kids. Maybe you had parents that said money doesn't grow on trees. No, we can't afford that. No, we can't go there. No, we can't do that because of money. And that's where we got limiting beliefs around money. So there you go. There's that first bad you know, influence. And then from there, you went to school. And school's not conditioning you to be a business owner. If anything, they're teaching you to be a factory worker. You know, it's like go to school, get a good job, stay out of jail you know, collect $200, you know, like that's the, that's the school mentality. Then you get into the workforce W2 and W2 is not teaching you to be an entrepreneur. They want to give you the golden handcuffs and keep you as long as possible. Right? So that's where we've been conditioned not to be the business owner, but then you jump into real estate and it's the blind leading the blind. It's like other owners are conditioning you not to have the true mentality of a true business owner. So the real estate investors running around, there's a lot out there who have good intentions, who think scale is the ultimate answer, but it's not. It's making sure you're keeping more. I just saw Tiffany post this the other, like it was yesterday or something where she said, like, I want to not pay seven figures in taxes again. You know, it's like, that's where a lot of people just need to be more intentional with that. And she's got a, she's got a plan in place to be able to get out of that too. That's the other thing. It's just not about walking down this road, but it's the plan and the steps to get away from that. So that's where I'm not even talking about taxes in this presentation. I'm talking about the cash that's going through your business. How do you make sure you're keeping more of it? Because other owners are going to teach you this formula. Sales minus expenses equals profit, meaning I make a sale. I pay everyone else and their mother. And hopefully at the end of the day, I have some profit. I'm praying that it's there. Like we build it on the hope and pray plan. That never works. 
So that's where we get this mentality and this uh, like, okay, you pay everyone else and hopefully you'll have some money. And then you're wondering why these people are stressed out or people like Joey, you know, losing $70,000 and feeling like they have to work the 80 to 100 hour weeks. It's because they're paying everyone else before they're paying themselves. So then what happens from there? You spend money to make money. You reinvest everything back in the business and you build your business on the hope and pray plan. I hope I make enough and I pray there's some left over. And that is one of the biggest mistakes we can do because then we are just constantly, then we never know if enough is enough. We never know if we've actually gotten to where we want to be. We're just hoping that there's more money than the expenses going out the door. But if we don't know what's coming in, what's going out, we never will achieve that solution. We will never feel satisfied of like, you know what? I feel better about my business now. We never get that like, okay, there's closure here. But that's where we have to give every dollar name in the business. I'm going to talk about that. So what really happens though? You end up running an accidental nonprofit. If you're just doing the hope and pray plan, you know, like if you started a real estate investing company, you started a for-profit business. The purpose of the business is to be profitable. And if you spend everything that you make, unintentionally especially, because there's some intentional ways to lower your taxes. I get all of that, like with the rentals and depreciation. But I'm saying unintentionally, you're just grinding it out. You're a wholesaler or a flipper. You're doing some type of selling. And like you are unintentionally becoming this nonprofit. It's because we're unintentional with the money and with the cash. And up to this point, it has not been your fault because there has not been someone to say, here's a simple system. That's what I want to correct today. So what really happens? Don't be that, non that, that nonprofit. Don't be that accidental nonprofit. So I want to take you from the land of hoping you're profitable and knowing where every dollar is going to the land of knowing. I know exactly where my money flows and goes and I'm in control of it versus me being yanked around on this chain, feeling out of control with my finances. So that's where I want to take you from the land of hoping to the land of knowing. Because the current habits that you have now might keep you in the real estate rat race. So all the things I was talking about that are fed to you up until this point that keeps you, if you've ever played Cashflow 101, Robert Kiyosaki's game, you literally play in this circle in the middle for the entire game, like for 95% of it, until you land on enough green spaces where your passive income exceeds your expenses, then you get to go to the fun track and do all the fun stuff. Well, guess what? If you jumped into real estate, you thought that you were going right to the fun track on the outside lane. And you're like, yes, I'm out of my W-2 job. This is going to be amazing. And then you realize, oh, shoot. I am literally now, instead of paycheck to paycheck, I'm just going around this wheel living deal to deal. And you're like, oh, dang it. I'm not on the fun track. Where's all the money going? Like, I thought there would be just money flowing in. We closed on three, three flips this month, the three wholesale deals. Like, shouldn't I have more in my account? Like, where did it all go? And then you're like, shoot, I got to just flip two more this next month in order to make payroll. So it's like you just keep yourself in the real estate rat race. You trade the paycheck to paycheck life for the deal to deal life. And I want to say that is not a fun place to be. I have been there, been there on a big scale, been there on a small scale too. And I've wanted to just say that this is why this appealed to me as the real estate owner and the real estate investor, the business owner. I want to make sure you're getting away from the real estate rat race. The three biggest mistakes I see on the financial side is you build your business on the hope and pray plan. So we talked about that. You have one big bank account where everything goes in and out of, and then you have no wealth habits to actually continuously keep the money where it should be in your bank account and where it should go. So that's what I want to help here. This is what the rest of the presentation will be is focusing on destroying these mistakes so you don't make them. Or if you have made them, how do you dig yourself out of that hole? Because I want to give you the wealth formula. This is the kind of like the crux of the message here. This is the crux of like what everything hangs on. But you've also heard this message before too. Sales minus profit equals expenses. Meaning I make a sale. I take my profit off the table and then the expenses are to grow the business. You might have heard this like rich dad, poor dad, pay yourself first or richest man in Babylon. The portion of all I have is mine to keep. Like there's a lot of books that talk about this concept. But until I read profit first, I didn't have a system to back it up. A good a good analogy that I heard recently was like software and hardware. Like this, this is the software that needed to go on top of the hardware where this might help you. Like, OK, I understand the formula, but how do I actually make it work? You know, like, how do I actually implement that? And that's where this is what I'm, the rest of the presentation is, is like, what are the steps I could take to make sure I'm putting profit first in the business to make sure that I'm accomplishing what I want to accomplish, why I even started my business. So number one, these are the three steps to become the wealthy business owner and to avoid financial ruin. 
Honestly, if you don't want to go down the path that Joey took, that's what we're going to talk about here. So number one, find what you need to keep. Find what you need from your business. So many people don't even have that number. They're just flying by the seat of their pants, just thinking, I need to do more deals. That's the thing that's going to solve all my problems. Instead of knowing this is what I need from my business. Because there's a great story in the book, Crucial Conversations, which is a book that has it's got five different authors. It's a red book. Pick it up. Highly recommend it. Chapter 10, they call it retaking your pen. Because what that means is your pen represents your self-worth. So when you're a kid, like you're writing your own story. You don't care. You don't give a flip what's going on. You're just asking questions. You're curious. You're just boundless energy and no one's holding you back. Well, then you get to be a, a little bit older, maybe teenage years, preteen, you know, and then everyone else, what are they wearing? How are they acting? What are they watching on this video? You know, like all this stuff. And then you take the, your pen and you give it to them. And now they're writing your story. Your pen's floating around somewhere. Someone else is writing it and you feel crappy. Well, then if you're on this webinar, though, at some point you were like, you know what? I don't care about what anyone thinks. I don't care what anyone else is doing. I'm going to become a real estate investor, a business owner. I'm going to make an impact on people. I'm going to take back my pen and write my story. And that was in a thrilling time. I bet you were either scared to death to start your LLC and start wholesaling, or you were like thrilled. But it was an exciting feeling. Whether it was anxiousness or whether it was that excitement, it was like, and then you did your first deal maybe. And then that excitement just went to the next level. Like, wow, I can do this. Like I can really make deals happen. So you were like, you were writing your story and you felt great. But then you hear people out there, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all the different places or different events or masterminds or whatever. And like, oh, they're doing, you know, how many deals a month? They're doing five. They're doing 10 deals a month. I should be doing that much. That's what I need to do because I need to fit in with that group and I need to make sure that I'm doing that. But that's not your goal. That, that has, that, that's just a number you pulled out of your butt. You know why? Because you just wanted to be like them. And then now they hold your pen and they're writing your story, even though they're writing their own with the five to 10 deals a month. And it's like, oh, shoot, they're writing my story and I feel crap because now I'm not doing five to 10 deals. Or you are, or you're like Joey, where he started doing the three to four deals a month. It was actually gaining traction. And then he felt crappy because at the end of the year, he lost the money and it didn't get him to where he wanted to be. It that by comparing himself and latching onto their goal, they, he wasn't able to get what he really wanted out of his business. He didn't want to be overworked, overstressed, and then not have any money in his bank account. That's not where he wanted to be. That's where we have to take back the pen and say, you know what? I started this freaking thing. I just got super excited on that first deal. I'm going to take back my pen, write my story, and make sure that I know what I need from the business. And no one else is going to tell me what I need. I'm going to make sure this is what I need for my family. This is what I need on a monthly basis. This is what I need to live. I need to make sure that I'm aggressively attacking that and taking it from the business as well too and not feeling guilty. So take back your pen. So what does that really mean? It's owner's comp. Making sure you're paying yourself. Just like all the books teach us, like the Robert Kiyosaki books. What you need to keep on a monthly basis to maintain your current lifestyle. So what is that number? Do you have that number? Could you print something now? Could you know, do you, are you tracking this currently? If you're not, then you're probably the typical business owner who's just sitting there, who's the average one who says, I'm just going to fly by the seat of my pants and more deals equals more money in the account and I'll be okay until you're not. So that's where you got to get this terminology down first because this is really big because there's an account to set up in the second system, in the second step that I want you to know and it's called owner's comp. So I wanted to get you the concept. But then an owner's comp truth, pre-profit first, you're doing one of two things. You're starving yourself or starving your business. The starving your business one is the one you see on Instagram or Facebook where they post a picture of the Lambo and it was like their second deal. And they just went out and blew all their money. And now they're trying to be the guru who hasn't really done a ton of deals. Like they're just, they are the ones that we already know. Like they're very, it's glaringly obvious. The first one is a little tougher pill to swallow. Even there, it was, it was tough to even get out. But starving yourself because you think it's noble. You think it's noble to not take a paycheck or to not be profitable or to pay everyone else first or to not. And that's where you feel uptight. You feel your shoulders tense. Your husband or wife asks you a question and you bark at them. It's like if your money's not where it needs to be and you're starving yourself, everything else can go away. Well, have you ever done a fast or have you ever not, you know, like you haven't eaten and it's dinner time and it's like, oh, shoot, I did, you know, like, or you do the intermittent fasting and you're like, you do one meal a day. It's like you are just, everything else just is out of your mind, 
right? And you're just looking for the food. When can I eat that next bite? I am just literally counting down the hours. It's the same thing with the business. If you're starving yourself and not paying yourself, you're just thinking about that all the time and can't think about what paying people more. You can't think about you know going on trips and having the, a good time or doing whatever it is that you want to do, what your business should be providing you. So that's where pre-profit first, you're probably doing one of these two things. I want to get you out of that, especially with this concept of owner's comp and paying yourself. Don't starve yourself. Then there's, what's the solution to this and making sure that th you're not just building it on the hope and pray plan, yet you know what you need from your business. Number one, find your keep number. I will at the end give you the form for free, no strings attached, like just download it and say, this is what I need to keep. And then to ask six questions, how much do I need? Like how much is my business providing now? Is my spouse providing any? And like, do I want to take theirs out and like just use, you know, the, from the real estate business? It's a very simple form, but it helps you get that North Star and do number two here. Build the business plan around that keep number. So once you know what you need, then you know that's what you have to aggressively attack and say, I'm going to keep at least this much and I'm going to pay myself on a consistent basis this much from the business once I have the revenue coming in. Because if you're just starting out on your first deal, you might not be able to do what you need. That's why you still have a W-2 job or other things, or maybe your spouse works, but it's like, how fast can I get to this number? So that way you have an actual goal, a very first goal out of the gate for your business. Then the third one, talk with your business partner and or spouse. If you, for the love of God, if you have someone that the money touches them as well too, like a business partner or a spouse or someone like that, talk with them about it. If, if your husband or wife is constantly asking, can we buy groceries this week? Or can we go out for a date? Or can we do this stuff? And it's always about the money. Like get them involved. So that way they know exactly what's going on in the business and with the money. And that will honestly help a ton on the home front. If you have a business partner, sometimes that keep number is different for the both of you. And you, know, you both need to talk about that and be realistic and have those expectations. Or otherwise, there's going to be a come to Jesus meeting in the future. And then it's not going to look pretty. So Joey, it's not just all a horrible, you know, downpours with Joey. It was also from here he said, okay, I need to find that keep number. He found what his was. What did he need to keep for his family on a monthly basis? From there, he worked backwards. How many flips did he need to do in a year? He had just a few rentals in his rental portfolio. But then he said, okay, this is how many flips I need to do in order to get my keep number and to keep the operation going. And I said, okay, how many is that? And he's like, yes, David. I said, is it like one to two a month instead of three to four? He's like, no, I need to do five in a year. I'm like, what the freak? Like, you know, like what is going on here? And he's like, yeah, I only need to do five because now I have the power of this is what I need from my business and what I need to keep. And this is what it equates to deal wise. So that he did not need to do more deals to keep more of the profit. You know what he did in 2020, the very next year, he did five deals. He did less deals than he's ever done. He told me this at the end of the year. David, I did less deals than I've ever done, and I have more money in my bank account than I've ever had because he implemented the system. It's because he gave himself that goal. You know that next year too? He also started working out again and like did other things that were in his routine before he started working the 80 to 100 hour weeks. That's where just finding that key number gives you a great mental clarity of like, this is the direction I need to go. So that's number one. Number two is the actual system. So create the system. This is going to be super simple. I'm not going to go into, you do not have to be a financial wizard to get this point. This is how to know what you make, spend, and keep. So here we go. What was the biggest, one of the biggest mistakes I said? It was one big bank account. So if you have one big bank account, like most entrepreneurs, you are managing everything in your business from your bank balance, and you have all the money going into one big pot. One big account, it could be a lender's funds, it could be your own funds, it could be the IRS and like what you owe them. It's like, what's my profit from there? It's very confusing. So there's no clarity with that one account. And you might feel guilty taking money out because you're like, ooh, I need to take some money out for myself because obviously like I've got a mortgage and I want to eat this week. And it's like, but if I take this money out, is this going to hurt payroll? Is this going to hurt my marketing campaign? Am I going to bounce checks? Am I going to like eat? You start going down that road because there's no clarity whatsoever from the bank level. I'm not even talking about QuickBooks or like any sort of financial software. Like I said, I'm a simple guy. Keep it simple with me. So that's where here, I don't want you feeling guilty and I don't want you to be confused because confusion leads to no confidence and leads to poor decision making where the clarity creates that confidence to make better decisions, to make more money and to be effective with every dollar that comes in. 
So what system is this? It's a modernized envelope system. Like I said at the beginning, like Dave Ramsey has made this very popular on the personal finance side. So whether you love him, hate him, I don't care. The sound principle of telling every dollar where to go and giving it a name has credence because I've seen it work over and over and over and over again now, hundreds of times in the real estate investing world. I don't want you setting up envelopes though, because you already look at your one big bank account, let's leverage what you're already doing. You know, literally looking at it maybe dozens of times a day. You know, it's like, I want you then to have the power right in your, the palm of your hand in your phone. You know, like if you have your phone there with a banking app that you could pull it up and here's my accounts that I have and this is what the money's for. So that's where I want you to leverage what you're already doing. But okay, what are the big accounts to set up? The first three is the golden trio. I'm a Harry Potter and Star Wars fan. Like I said, I'm just like the numbers guy. I look like the numbers guy and I look like that, a fan of those movies. So I get it. But I love these big epic sagas, right? You've got Harry Potter, you've got Star Wars, you've got Luke Han Leia, Harry Ron Hermione, making sure good wins in the end and that the epic saga comes to a happy conclusion. Well, guess what? Your business is your epic saga. You're going to go out there. You're going to get the deals under contract. You're going to put your blood, sweat, and tears into it. You're going to listen to Tiffany and Joshua. You're going to close those deals. You're going to get the money in. And guess what? You need something at the end of the day to actually show for it. So you need to win. You need to make sure that there's three main heroes helping you on your journey so that way you actually have something to show for it. But not just in the future, right now today from the deal that just closed. So like making sure you have a system for today. So what's the golden trio of accounts? These are the first three, profit, owner's comp, and owner's tax. These help you keep more. That's why I have the keep word there because this is the framework of make, spend, and keep. These three accounts help you keep more and know that you're keeping it. Profit is the extra, okay? That is the icing on the cake. That is the difference of like, okay, why did I start my business? Profit is that extra money that is going into that bank account and that you take it out once a quarter. So you don't take this out every month. You don't wait till the end of the year to take your profit out. You give yourself a reward every quarter from the profit account because this is why you started your business. You started it pretty profitable and then you use that money for what your purpose is. The owner's comp account, that, that name looks very similar to what number one was all about. That number one, finding, you know, taking back your pen, finding what you need to keep. The owner's comp account is to make sure you're getting out of your rat race. It's the account that you pay yourself on a consistent basis where the profit is the icing on the cake the owner's cop is the bread and butter. <laughs> We're making sure that you're able to feed your family. You're able to do the things that you need to do on a monthly basis to live the life that you want to live. This is like the work that you do in the business. You're getting paid for it. So that's your owner's compensation. This could be payroll, like from a W-2 from your business. This could be a distribution from this account on a monthly basis. This is making sure that you are getting paid for the work that you're doing. The owner's tax account is to make sure that tax time, you're not running around like a chair with your head cut off then and saying like, oh shoot, it's tax time. I gotta close four deals just to pay off this tax bill. You know, it's like, why don't we spread that out throughout the year from all the deals that close? So that way when it's tax time, we don't have the, if, even if we have a big tax bill that we can cover. So that's the golden trio because those are all for you. They're all for you to help you keep more from the business. Then here, the other foundational accounts as well to set up. OPEX you already have, you already have number five. Okay, that's the bad guy, that's Voldemort. You know, that's the emperor. That's the evil villain, right? All the money goes out of there. That's what you're spending. So it goes out on a monthly basis, very easy to track. How much is going out? Income is a new account to set up that's separate from OPEX. You might have automatic deposits going to OPEX already. I would set up income as a separate account, call it income or deposits. All the money that flows into your business sits in income until you transfer it from income to the other foundational accounts. So it comes into income, then you transfer it to guess what? The golden trio first, and then to OPEX. So that way you can still grow the business. But that's how the flow of the money works. So it comes into income, then it flows out to the other three and the other four. The OPM though is for, <laughs> this is the save you from a Ponzi scheme account. Save your butt. Because this is where a lot of flippers, especially if you're getting into the fix and flip realm at all, then if you take money from private lenders and they give you the purchase price plus rehab all up front, it feels real good to put it in one big bank account because then it's overflowing with money, right? Well, guess what? If you set that OPM up in a different place, like in a different bank account that you set up, a physical bank account, business checking account that is separate from all the foundational five accounts, now you can see this is the money to run the business with all these five. And with the OPM account, this is what I'm running my rehabs on. 
So that way you know, am I going over budget? Well, how much do we have in the OPM account versus how much we need left for our projects? It's very clear to see what's my money and the business's money versus what's the private lender's funds and what do we have to do for the projects. That one's a huge one. So make sure you set up that account if nothing else. Taps. This is target percentages because everyone asks, okay, I get the fake account set up. I start transferring the money, but how much do I transfer? You know, like what do I do? Well, this is a good sheet, whether you're going to sell a property or buy and hold it. These are the different percentages based on this row here. The real revenue range is like, how much gross profit are you doing in a year? Depending on the gross profit, these are healthy percentages to shoot for, depending on the type of business you have. So that's where, like if you're one to five million, you bring in 100%, that's what you make. Then this is 10% of profit, 10% owner's pay, 50% tax, 65% operational expenses. That's a healthy percent. Those are healthy percentages for that column. But if you're just starting, you need more to go pay yourself because you might be the only employee. <laughs> you might be the sole breadwinner for your family and you need to take more out at the beginning. But then as you scale and grow, you need to pay yourself a less percentage, but offer a bigger amount because you need more percentage to go towards paying people to be able to take stuff off of your plate so that way you can make more and go out and do more, but then without running around 80, 100 hour weeks, right? So that's where this is the taps goes into play of like, what are my targets? You do not have to hit targets right away though, because if you're, if you go through this system and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, like I'm spending really as much as I'm making right at this point, is this for me? And it's like, yes, this is the target to shoot for. So if you're at like 100% OPEX versus 100% of what you make, then can next quarter, can you do 1% to profit owner's tax and like the owner's, you know, the owner's pay account, the owner's cop? Like, can you do at least 1% like towards that to get in the habit? So that way you can slowly go towards where you need to go. These are just good targets for you to shoot for. So then from here, this is where Joey, this is where it gets really visual because as an entrepreneur, I like the visual stuff. So on the right-hand side, he sent me a picture, a screenshot of all his bank accounts and said, David, I'm, I, I wish I wouldn't have fought you at the beginning of opening these accounts because I love having these accounts and the visibility it gives me. This is where now I see how much is in income in this business, income for the other business, OPEX, you know, to pay out tax savings, my profit, the OPM, the rehab, and what can I pay myself? It's very clear how much I have in there and I know what I need. Because once you have this clarity, you know how much you need in those different accounts. Then on the left-hand side was him taking his first profit draw and going on a, a weekend trip with his family. So that's him with his family just having a good time up in the top left-hand corner, but from his profit account and didn't have to touch OPEX. Didn't have to touch any of the other accounts. Then the bottom left is him setting up the tax account. Okay, I told you the story of a CPA who's, who we walked into a, her office at the beginning of the year. Well, let's close that loop. He walks in the next three years. Okay, this is 2023. So I've had the privilege of working with him for three years. He walked in to her office the last three years. The first year, she's like, what the heck happened? Like, you not only, I want to get into real estate because I like your bottom line this time, but you also owe taxes. Even though you have these rentals and depreciation, you owe taxes because even with your five flips, you had enough money that you made that you owe. He's like, okay, how much do I owe? She tells him the, month, the dollar amount. And he says, okay, let me check my bank account. Pulls up his phone, just like that, looks at the tax account and says, yep, I have it. Where do I send it? This time it was her turn to pick herself up off the floor. And she said, okay, just send it here. He's like, good. I don't want to talk to you for another year, you know, and walks out of the office. And that's where the next two years he did the same thing. Only the next two years, he had more money in the tax account than he needed. So he gave himself a tax refund. <laughs> he put it into the profit account, bought an RV the first year to travel with his family. Then the second year he did a, uh, he put into a camp for kids. That's that Camp Yahweh account he's, he's referencing down there. He put it towards a giving account because that was one of the causes that he wanted to give towards. So it's like, this is what it really unlocks. Once you know where the money's going, you can direct it better. That's where at the end of that first year of being on profit first, he said, I did less deals and have more money now. And he's like, where was this money going before? Like, it's not like I even had more to play with this year, but now I end up with more because I've directed every dollar. That's the power of the system of knowing what you make, spend, and keep. So in the note, third one, become the wealthy owner, keep more. This is building wealth habits. So once you have these bank accounts set up, it's not just good enough to set them up. We got to get into some rhythms. And once you have rhythms, this should take you, honestly, less than an hour a week. I would say less than 30 minutes a week to manage the finances for your entire business, especially as you're growing and scaling. This is like how to manage the cash 
for less than 30 minutes a week. This is what to do. Number one, move the money. <laughs> this is a real simple slide. Every week, move your money. That means that if you sell a property by that Friday, transfer it from income to the other foundational accounts. So move it from income to the other ones. If you're like, hey, I don't sell a deal every week. Well, just like Joey, he didn't sell one every week. He was selling one of a quarter, basically. When If he sold it on Monday by that Friday, we had the money transferred from income to the other accounts. Because if you don't get in that habit, it's too easy to let the income account sit there, build up. And you're like, shoot, I don't remember like if I need to transfer money or how much I need to or like if there's money I have to move around or whatever. You're like, you don't remember. Okay, it's very human to not remember what was that money for and like how much of that was the problem, like whatever. That's where don't have it just sit in that income account. Move it on a weekly basis. Then on a monthly basis, review it. I have given you the framework for make, spend, and keep. That income account, how much came in there. The spend account, how much it went out of OPEX. So how much did I spend? How much did I keep? How much did I actually transfer to the Golden Trio? So now I know how much I made, spent, and kept. At least I know that for the last month. And that will give you more clarity around your business to make better decisions, to actually make more money because you could put the dollars to better use now. So that's where just having that system, knowing where the money's going and being able to review it gives you a leg up of 95% of, of the business owner market, not just real estate investors, but business owners in general, just knowing those three things. So review it at least on a monthly basis and look forward to it. Because that way you could see, did we put enough in profit? Like, do I have enough for my owner's cop? Like, how many months do we have socked away in there? It's like, that's when it gets fun. When it gets really fun is the quarterly. On a quarterly basis, go to your profit account and take money out and do whatever the heck you want with it. That's where you go to that profit account once a quarter, once on a quarterly basis and say 50% comes from the profit account into my bank account and I do whatever I want with it. That's where you can buy the car and not starve the business because you're literally taken from profit and you've still got the money all the other places. I don't care what you do with that money. Celebrate your success. Feel like the business owner. Why did you start your business? You did not start it to become a cash eating monster and to just float it all the time. You started it to have fun, to have financial freedom, whatever that means for you specifically. Whatever reason you're thinking of right now, that's why you started it. If you don't have a system to catch the money, you will never catch real financial freedom. You can make all the money in the world and that if you can't kill the root problems of why you're not keeping it, then you will never have what you want. So here we go. Every quarter, take the money. The only other reason to use the profit account is if you are in bad debt, like credit card debt or like anything that's keeping you up at night. Maybe you've used private lenders money and like, hey, I ran out of Project A's funds, you know, and like I need to still pay back Project A's lender. Use that money to aggressively pay down any debts that you owe that are not good ones. So I'm not, and if you want to use the money to pay down good debt too, why not? You could do whatever you want with it, but I want you to just be intentional with it. If it's killing you and keeping you up in that because of the debt that's, uh, you know, use up to 90% of it. Otherwise use the fund money up to 50% because then you'll still have a buffer. So that way, if the business does start to tank, you still don't, you haven't run out of money out of all the accounts. That's why to keep the buffer in there, it's for your peace of mind too. So there you go. That's what you do on a weekly basis. You move it on a monthly basis, review it. And then on a quarterly basis, take it and have fun. Be like the business owner. Feel like this was worth it to start this real estate investing company. So here's a recap. Find what you need to keep. Number one. Number two, create the wealth system. So actually set up. What are the three, you know, the three, four, five accounts that I need to set up right now in my business to make sure I know what I'm making, spending, keeping. Become the wealthy owner. Build those wealth habits. Know what to do at those time frames. And for, like, I need to beat number one again because it doesn't get beat up enough. Like, take back your pen. You felt yourself worth enough to start something, to be on this, to take enough time to talk, to listen to someone talk about the finances of the business. You know, like, you took this time out, do something with that. Take it back and say, I'm going to, you know, that form, that keep form that where I need to find that keep number, I'm going to fill that out. I'm going to talk with my spouse. I'm going to change the trajectory of my business and my life because I've seen it happen because it happened with Joey, but it happens with a whole lot of other people that go down this road. So then with Joey, he was able to work out and other stuff. It was not just about the mom, dollars and cents. He was able to get back into triathlons. This is 2019 in the orange shirt. This is 2020. You know, like just being able to not think about that's where. If you're starving yourself, that's where everything else goes away. He wasn't able to work out, do the things that he wanted to do. That's where it helps you to focus on the things that matter to you. The other benefits 
that not having to worry about the money provides. Then from there, what gets me excited the most, which I'm already super excited about this whole thing, if you can't tell, but profit unlocks your purpose, okay? This is where, why did you start your business? Not just like to make money, because everyone says, okay, if you want to make money, well, then this is the way to do it. But if you're like, I started to spend more time abroad or like I want to travel with my family or I want to take more vacations. I want that awesome car. I want that house. I want the jet. I want whatever. You want to give to a cause. This is how you could do it. Because on the left-hand side, that's the RV inside of the RV that he bought with his profit account and took a three-week vacation last year. Joey also called me last year and in June and said, David, I filled up all my profit accounts and all my profit first accounts, including my OPEX. For the rest of the year, I wouldn't have to do another deal and I would be okay from June to December. That's the power of not having to worry about the money. He was able to pivot, do whatever he needed to do as the real estate market was going up and down to be able to say, okay, what do I need to do in order to keep our business going? But not have, but he didn't have to worry about the money at that point. Then on the right hand side, this is what gets me like in the heart because he said at the beginning of the year, like he had a goal to give 56,000 to this camp for kids. Then near the end of the year that he raised the goal to 71000 and then at the end of the year gave more than $70,000 to this camp for kids. And what gets me excited there is if you remember, I told you he lost $70,000 back in 2019. And then in 2022, he gave over $70,000 from one account to a camp for kids. One of the big reasons he even started real estate investing. And that's where he was able to fulfill one of the purposes of his business. He was able to give more than what he had lost in that previous year and not touch his profit, not touch his owner's account, not touch the taxes, not touch the other accounts. So that's where I want to give this power in your hand. Just have this clarity. Till this day, he's not doing a ton of deals. He, he hasn't scaled to like a massive team. So that's where it's like, that's where it gives you the option. Do I want to scale, but scale profitably because I have a system? Or do I want to stay smaller because I've got small kids at home and I want to hang out with them and have more time? This system at least gives you the option. What is your purpose right now? You might not have kids at all. And it's like, you know what? I want to make and keep as much as possible. But then here you go. Like, here's the system. Take this review. Like, if they're going to do the recording and send it out, like, just take it again. Take those notes of, like, what should I set up? What are the things that I need to do? Get the book if you want a in more in-depth review, like Profit First for Real Estate Investing. Like, if you want more. Make sure that you can go out there and get it. I want you to have a simple system for your finances. So from here, we created a company, Simple CFO. I have no, I did not, like, this is where I have no financial background, okay? I'm not an accountant. I'm not a bookkeeper. But I have been pissed off by accountants and bookkeepers in the past. I don't know if you've ever had that interaction where you're like, what the heck just happened? Like, they've either, I've sent them 14 emails and not gotten a response. Or like, what are they doing? Those, that, those transactions look nothing like real estate investing. You know, it's like they don't know what they're doing. If you've had a bad interaction, I started Simple CFO to make sure that people could actually have a bridge between, you know, the, the bookkeeper, the CPA, and the owner to make sure that you could actually know what's going on and to implement profit first because a lot of people don't have that. So what do we do? We put a CFO on your team, a part-time person, because you do not need a full-time person, but a fractional CFO that meets with you on like maybe a, two times a month or something to just make sure that we have things in place. We assess the financial team, the systems, the processes, the, and implement an action plan. So like, what is your current bookkeeping process? Do you suck at managing the bookkeeper? Great, let us take that over. You don't have a bookkeeper? Great, let's make sure we get one in the door so that way you take that off your plate or whatever it might be. Then we implement profit first and we set up a simple CFO dashboard, which is literally a Google sheet that we've created for the real estate investing industry. These are the top numbers you need to know as a business owner that will help you make more and keep more of your of your profitability. So like where a money comes in, where do I put every dollar? Okay, I'm hiring a new person. How much is that return going to be on that person? Oh, we did a marketing campaign. What's the return on that? Should I pour more money into it or should I pull it back? That's the type of stuff that we do on that dashboard. But I just want to at least give you that information because from here, I want to give you two big things. I want to give you the find your keep number form and the full ebook of Profit First for Real Estate Investing. So I don't want you to go back here. I don't care if you buy the book or not. I wanna at least give it to you. So if you're like, hey, I do ebooks great, well then please get this ebook and make sure that you read it and go through and you can highlight it, take notes. If you want the keep number form, we have that as well too, like making sure that you actually have the keep number of like giving you that North Star so that way you know where every dollar is going. Also too, 
the cash flow multiplier. That's where we took one tab of like, where do I put all the dollars once it comes in? I want to give that to you. What's well, the profit first banks? If you're, this is one of the biggest questions I get. That's why I put that in there now. Like, where do I set this up? My bank is Chase or something else or like a big or a small bank. They don't want me to set up a bunch of accounts. That's why I put that list together. These are the ones that are friendlier. But if you're like, hey, can I just set up at my home, home account if they're okay? Yes. You don't have to go with one of those banks if yours is going to be friendly to open up more accounts. The target list, that's the tap sheet. So if you're like, hey, that was really good. I want to know what the percentages are. Give that to you. Net worth mastery system. I did that with my mentor of like, if you want to track your net worth. Profit first for personal. This is something that we got all the time. If you're like, hey, I love this system, but I want to do it in my home life because in my home life, the money comes in and it goes right out the door. But here you go. Here's a simple system for profit first for personal that I set up with a video walkthrough to make sure if you want to implement that. Then if you want to schedule a call with us, that's fine. If you don't, I get that too. It depends on where you are in your business. We work with people starting at the $200,000 gross profit range and above and making sure that we've worked with people at the five, $10 million mark. I just want to make sure if we can at least point you in the right direction, like I don't have a good bookkeeper or I don't have a good CPA, we have those connections. So even if we're not the right fit, we can connect you to a real estate investing bookkeeper, CPA or whoever, if you don't have that already. I just want to make sure that you have a chance on the financial side without wanting to beat your head against a nail. So that's where I want to make sure you're saving yourself from that misery and pain. You can go there for that. You can scan that or go to that link, simplecfo.com forward slash hi. And that's where you can just download that stuff right from there. It'll send it to your email. And then you'll have all those documents, all that information. You'll have the book, the full book. This is not just like, oh, you get the first two chapters, blah, blah, blah. No, you get the full Profit First for Real Estate Investing ebook because I want you to not have any excuse not to go back and start implementing. My hope is you'll take one action item, either one of these two things, find your keep number if you don't have that, or set up at least one bank account, the profit account or something, just so you get into the habit of not spending every dollar that you're making. So that's the end of the presentation. It wasn't, I know, I don't even know what time it is, 548 my time. So there you go. That's the last of my slides. Thank you so much for having me. I don't know if this is, there's going to be question and answer or if you want to do anything like that, but I wanted to at least put that up there get people access to it, but do you want me to stop screen sharing at this point? I, uh, yeah, you can absolutely. So I do want to open it up. Um, if you guys okay. have any questions for David at all, just go ahead and throw those in the chat. looks like there's um, one. Thank you so much for hope. saying, are there any banks you would recommend that make it easiest to set up these multiple accounts? Haha. <laughs> also in the difference between the owner's comp and the profit account owner's comp is just your regular self pay. Okay. Two great questions. And I get this a lot. That's why, I save that to the end to answer the question. You'll get the profit list, the profit, which is the profit first banks that are friendly. So just download that. There's the answer to the first one. But it really doesn't matter too. Like if your bank sets them up, set it up with your bank. Just get the process started. Don't let something hold you back from what you could get from this system. That would be my big overarching like message there. Don't worry too much about the bank unless there's excessive fees and they just don't want you to open up the banks. Then you need to go somewhere else and start the system somewhere like that. Relay is a great bank, an online bank that you could set up really quick. Then from there, let's see, or does it really matter? Okay, owner's comp and the profit account. Owner's comp is the pay that you pay yourself on a regular basis. Think of this like if you're not taking a W-2 from your business now, think of it like withdrawing money as consistently as you would get paid from another job. That's really what owner's comp is to make sure that you're fulfilling that keep number that you find from point number one. I need $5,000 a month. Well, am I filling up the owner's comp bucket with 5,000 at least a month to be able to pay myself? And then I pay myself that on a monthly basis or bi-weekly basis. I take out half of that or whatever. You get what I'm saying? That's where owner's comp comes in. Profit is the icing on the cake. That is why you started your business. That is like for Joey, he took the extra percentages from profit towards his giving account to be able to give or to be able to buy the RV where it was like, okay, on a quarterly basis, you take that money out of profit and do whatever you want with it up to 50%. Then is that what you pull up to 50% by the end, by the, at the end of the quarter? Yes. So owner's cap is just your regular and profit is what you pull out up to 50%. So there you go. That's the answer. And I did answer that live. So boom, done. Then let's see the other ones. Great. Thank you so much. I'll write down your book onto my Audible account. Yes, I do have it on Audible. So because I... I'm a real estate investor. I mean, I've got even the headphones in right now. I listen to books all the time. So I was like, I need to record it on Audible to make sure that you have every resource possible to at least listen to it as well too. I speak 
uh, I'm really fast on that. It's just like here, I get really excited about this topic. So there you go. Any other questions that anyone else has? Another big one I have, you can, you can ask a question while I'm answering this and unless you don't have a question. But then from here, if you have multiple entities, so let's say you're wholesaling, fixing, flipping, and rentals. Do I set up the system for each, you know, for all of that and for every LLC that I have? I would set it up for the different business types. Like I would want to see, is my wholesale company profitable? And how profitable is it? How much could I take from that? My flip company, how is that doing cash-wise? So set up the foundation and the rentals too. But if you're like, I have a bunch of rentals in a bunch of their own LLCs, you don't have to set up the profit first accounts for each LLC that holds one or two rental properties. That would be more like, okay, I'm just going to do the overarching system for like master accounts for all my rentals. So if you're like, I just do fix and flip and rentals, like Joey, he had a set of accounts for his rental company, set of accounts for his flip company. That's probably one of the other biggest questions that I get asked as well um, when I go on these. But there's no other questions. I Hopefully this was helpful to you. I just want to get this message out there as much as possible because I've seen it work over and over again. Joey's not the only story. He's just one of the ones that's been the craziest ride so far over the last three, three and a half years that he's been on this system. But thank you for having me. This was a pleasure to be able to speak to the group. Shout out to Atomic Habits book in the back. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> lots of books back here. I've got lots of books back here. Yeah, I've read lots of these. These are, um, yeah, books that have helped to mold me into who I am today. No, David, I, I, I seriously awesome. can't thank you enough. Uh, I literally had a student tell me two days ago that it was time to take his pen back. So hearing you make that reference is really awesome. Um, uh, no, just That's awesome. constant dropping uh, so much knowledge on us. And we appreciate you so much um, just hearing the passion, everything that you have, uh, you know, for this. Uh, really, you guys, thank you for all the questions, for tuning in. Um, David, we can't thank you enough for being here. Really appreciate your time. Um, guys, uh, appreciate you for uh, hopping on here. Thanks so much. Thank you.